Hello everybody out there and welcome back to another episode of Dark Avengers Halloween Havoc. I know you again. I almost talked before you did your thing. I, I know you. Anyway, I'm sorry this episode's late guys. It's been a hectic uh, last couple of days this week. You know, New York Comic Con and crazy stuff. Check out the whole video to find out the lowdown about everything. But here, we're back. We got two episodes for you guys today, one for the 8th and one for today the 10th, but today's episode, this episode, is covering the Alien series. I am going to be going through the entire series for this review. That means Alien, Alien Director's Cut, Aliens, Alien 3, and Alien Resurrection. Some of these movies we try not to talk about, and some of these movies are really, really good. So let's start off with Alien. This movie set the space horror genre in my opinion this movie was great it was one alien against how many members one two three four five six seven members of the nostromo each one at one at a time were picked off by this one alien they get a distress call from lv420 i believe 426 they land on the planet they do some exploring one of them gets face hugged. You guys know what a face hugger is, I hope. And the alien is born on the ship, and all hell breaks loose. And the only one that survives is Amanda Ripley. The director's cut, however, really quickly before we get into aliens, the director's cut adds a couple of extra scenes. And because we didn't get into aliens yet, we didn't know that the alien eggs were created by a queen. So it made it look like the alien that was on the ship was able to make his own or her own eggs. So the aliens basically just made the eggs on their own instead of it being a queen. But then we got into Aliens. This is one of my favorite movies of the series. And honestly, I feel this was a perfect sequel to end the series completely. Ripley gets called back. You know, she survived the first movie. She gets picked up. It turns out that her ship malfunctioned. She went into a hypersleep. She basically slept over, how many years does it say? 57 years without obviously aging. Apparently this, this uh, freezer or whatever the bed she was in kept her completely unchanged by time. So half a century later she wakes up, or more, uh, more than half a century, 57 years. Let's go with that. And now LV-427 apparently has been colonized and people are living there. Everything's great until they lose contact with LV-427, uh, or, yeah, 26, 426, why did I say 7? 26, and uh, Ripley, whom nobody believed what happened on the Nostromo, even though it was 57 years ago, nobody believed it at all. Uh, they believed that Ripley somehow was responsible for the deaths of everybody, so she loses her license, she's stuck working docks uh, over Earth, and she's miserable. Her daughter is dead because she died of old age. I mean, she was already a young, uh, I think she was a teenager when Ripley left, or a little girl, and uh, unfortunately when Ripley came back, she had died just a, pre a couple of years previous. So Ripley uh, didn't get to reunite with her daughter, which was sad, and um, then, like I said, something happens on LV-426, and they want Ripley as a um, informant. So she goes in with the army. She finds this little girl who survived. Apparently, they found the ship. <clears throat> uh, and we find out that one of the characters, Gorm, uh, uh, Carter Burke, I want to get his first name, who works for Waylon Yutani, uh, actually, when he heard Ripley's story, sent a, sh uh, a car out to where the location of the ship was. One of the people found the ship, the egg, the hatching, and you guys know the rest. Basically, the entire colony was wiped out one at a time. But there was one survivor, and it was this little girl called Newt. And as the story uh, continued, um, they there was um, they find the the nest. We we learned that there is a queen. That there's hundreds of the aliens because each one of the colony people were killed. And obviously they were chest bursted. So we had an army of aliens versus an army of humans. And let's just say the humans didn't come out on top. In the end, once again, Ripley and Newt were the only two that survived. But they also survived with, um, oh god, Hicks. 
and um, oh, what was the other guy's name? Bishop. Bishop being a cyborg um, copy of Whalen, Peter Whalen. There's also a special edition, which is an uncut movie. And it's extra scenes. Doesn't change the plot, though. It's very different than the director's cut of Alien. It literally just added the scenes that they couldn't have in the movie. Right here is where the Aliens line should have ended. Aliens 2 was a perfect sequel. You know, she went off. LV-426 was... The, the aliens were destroyed. The planet was done. There was that huge explosion. No fuss, no muss. It was over. And then we got Aliens 3. Which basically killed everybody in the survivor's um, ship, except for Ripley. In other words, everybody from Aliens 2 was somehow killed. Hicks dies. Bishop basically was a, a pile of mess that she accessed one more time before he died out. And unfortunately, which and this bothered me a little bit, Newt died as well. And she's stuck on this prison base now until she could be picked up again. And apparently there was an egg on the ship. Somehow one of the, uh, it ended up on there. She was impregnated and then she had to end up killing herself at the end of the movie to, um, what do you call it, to uh, prevent the alien from continuing its breeding. And there was another egg on the ship that didn't obviously open until she landed on the prison ship and you guys know the dog alien. And then there's a special edition again with all added scenes. Then we get the final piece, which is Alien Resurrection. Years later, they find, uh, they took uh, Ripley's DNA, they tried to clone her a bunch of times, they finally succeeded, they pulled the alien out from her before it burst, but now because they did the cloning thing, and the alien was inside of her, the DNA meshed, so now Ripley is basically part alien, part human, and it made no sense, and the movie completely went, and this movie just was completely and utterly nuts. And there was a special edition, or there was an, uh, yeah, there was a special edition for that too, with a very special ending. I, 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 this should have ended along uh, on Aliens 2. <clears throat> now the good news is with this series is there is talks about a um, another Alien movie that takes place after Aliens. Meaning it's going to take Aliens 3 and Alien Resurrection out of the picture completely. Which I like. I'm very happy with. Because Aliens 3 was bad and Aliens 4 was worse. So I think it's good to forget about them and move off of the two movies that actually were great. So if you're going to go out and watch an Alien movie, I would recommend Alien 1 and Aliens. Period. Stop there. You don't need to watch Alien 3. And you don't need to watch Alien Resurrection especially. Even though I love the act, one of the actresses in it and I love Ron Perlman as well. That movie was just badly done in my opinion. It, you didn't need to see it. I'm not counting. I know there's Alien vs. Predator. There's two movies there. And I know there is the prequel or set in the same universe, Prometheus. We will be covering Prometheus. But those movies I don't consider as part of the Alien Saga because it either is a prequel or a not prequel prequel or a mesh of two uh, horror genres together, Alien and Predator. So I don't count that. I only count the four movies I see with Alien. And like I said, I would really, truly only count the first two movies. And I would gladly say ignore three and four. Not something I would recommend. But one and two were absolutely out of this world. I enjoyed it. We did do a live viewing of Aliens on Comic Frontline when Media Madness first started. So if you want to see a live watching of that, go check it out on Comic Frontline in the playlist. I believe it was either the third or fourth. I know it wasn't the first because the first was Ghostbusters. So it was one of them. I would recommend checking it out. It was a, the first and second movies were the best. The other two avoid at all costs. With that, that's it for this Halloween Havoc episode. Thank you guys so much for sticking with me through this entire series. I'm going to try not to do that too often because I'm, I'm pushed after doing this one. And I still have one more to go. But... Aliens, for what it's worth, two good movies, two horrible movies. Hopefully if they do make another Alien movie and it prequels the second movie, or not prequels, it, it sequels the second movie, hopefully it'll be a lot better than what we got with Alien 3. Till then, guys, feel free to let me know in the comments below what you guys thought of Alien, Aliens, Alien 3, Alien 4, the series in general, the character, the stories, whatever. 
I know Alien is a huge um, thing in Dark Horse. Loving Alien, we're doing a whole horror uh, corner on the the on the buses for Aliens. Great series, great characters. Love Ripley. Till next time, everybody. There's a bunch of links in the description as well. Connected to this channel, Dark Avengers C86, Comic Frontline, Zone 4 Podcast, Frontline Gaming Zone. Check them out whenever you can. Lots of content coming at you guys, always. Till then, guys, take care. Keep reading, keep collecting, and I will see you guys really soon in the next video.